I am usually not a fan of changes. So I was definitely a little nervous when Shaper 3D announced that they're rolling out a bunch of new updates over the next few months and years. Especially when the first one is going to be changing the entire user interface. They actually sent me the beta of that update for both the iPad and Mac OS a few weeks ago just to get my thoughts on it. The full version is probably already available for you to download by the time that you're watching this video. And since I'm able to run both the current and the beta versions on all of my devices at the same time right now, the guys over at Shaper 3D and I decided that this would be the perfect time to partner up and give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of these two and share my thoughts with you on these changes. But before we get into all of that, this update requires a little bit of context because Shaper 3D really be rolling out updates like it's nobody's business over the last few years. We've been getting tools like creating patterns or the ability to isolate single parts to larger updates like Windows and Mac support, manufacturing drawings, and visualization tools like 3D rendering. So it's always been more or less of a function update, so I think people might wonder why are we getting this UI refresh when it seems like it's just a surface change. Like we're so used to the current UI, we built our entire workflow around this, why are we making a change to this and disrupt our workflow? Well, it turns out Shaper 3D just announced a few weeks ago that they're adding history-based parametric modeling capabilities to the program sometime later this year and they're building that on top of the direct modeling technology that it currently has, which means that we're getting the best of both worlds. And this is a huge update for anyone that uses this program to model pretty much anything. And I already talked in my past videos about the differences between the different modeling types and my thoughts on them, especially pertaining to furniture design. But it's a pretty loaded topic, so I'm probably gonna do a deeper dive once that update comes out. Um, sorry I digress, guys. But along with this update, we're getting a bunch of other ones over the next few months and years. So enter this new UI refresh, which is gonna be the foundation that all the other updates are gonna be building upon. And to my relief, we're not gonna be losing any of the features that already make Shaper 3D great, like the adaptive UI, which honestly, I was a little bit worried that we're gonna lose when this was first announced. But on the contrary, this update actually made the adaptive UI work even a little bit better, which you'll see in a little bit. But I just wanna say that one of the main purposes for this update is to give the developers the necessary space for them to add the new tools and features that we're gonna be getting with those other updates. Okay, so let me give you guys an example. So let's go to the home page, which is the first thing you're gonna see when you open up the app. And this view is already available on all the current versions. It looks almost exactly the same. But the reason why they changed this view previously was so that soon we can start adding folders along the left-hand side here and start getting our designs more organized. Now this feature is not available in my beta version yet, but they did mention that on their website website, so I think it's probably safe for me to talk about. And I think this is a pretty big deal for a lot of people, me included, because as you can see, I usually have multiple designs for a single project. There's gonna be an initial design for my clients so that I can show them my idea, and then there's gonna be another design that's more feasible to build, where I worked out all the problems. And then I'll split those into metric and imperial so that I can make plans for my audience. And if there's anything that needs to be cut on a CNC or laser, I'll have a separate file just for that. So in the future, I'll be able to group all of these together into a folder so that I don't have to waste time rummaging around looking for what I'm trying to find. This was definitely one of those things that we've been asking for for a while. And I guess they had to update the interface before they were able to give it to us, but hey, better late than never, and I am really glad that it's coming. All right, let's dive into the meat of these changes and take a look at these icons because that's probably the first thing you're gonna notice when you first start designing. And let's do a split view so that we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. And right off the bat, you'll notice that these new set of icons is more or less dominated by filled in shapes, whereas the current set of icons is more or less dominated by lines. Combined with the higher contrast, the current set of icons is definitely easier to see it's just a lot more visible, but I'm not totally sure if I'm in love with it yet because I still kind of dig the minimalist look on the current set of icons. Uh, I'm sure this will start growing on me once I start using it more because right now I'm still kind of just bouncing back and forth between these two apps. 
But one thing for sure though, this new set of icons is definitely utilizing this space a lot more efficiently by removing all these extra spaces between the icons. And another thing you'll notice is that they added this translucent background to these labels so that even when the model is behind the text, it is still very much visible. Whereas in the current version, once the model is behind it, the text is very hard to see, especially when the model is dark like this. And even if I change the color to something light, the text is still kind of hard to see just because there's so many lines in this model. So if anything, this is going to be really helpful for anyone who had trouble reading the text before. And I know it's definitely going to help me when I make these tutorial videos so that my viewers can actually see what I'm clicking on without the text just disappearing into the background. Um, and you guys probably already noticed that the icons have shifted. So on the current UI, most of the icons are placed kind of in the middle. And on this new UI, there's a large group on the top left, and then there's a smaller group of icons down the bottom left. And these kind of used to be scattered all over the interface. And they call this the mode island, which consists of the section view that used to be right here, and then the measurement tool that used to be right here. And this position actually changes depending on what's going on with the adaptive UI. And if we double tap on a part, the adaptive UI also brings up the isolate tool, which is actually one of my favorite tools to use if I remember to use it. So let me explain. In the current UI, if we double tap on a part, we actually have to come under the items manager to find the isolate tool. And on top of that, we don't really know if this tool is on or off without coming in here and seeing this icon. Whereas on the current version, it's very clear if it's on or off just by the text underneath the label, which is great. Like I said, I love this tool because as a furniture designer, we're always dealing with a bunch of parts. And this tool allows us to select a single part or a group of parts and automatically hide everything else. It saves a ton of time from not having to go in and manually hide the parts that we don't want. So having this tool always visible and being able to see if it's on or off without needing to go into the items manager, it just feels a lot more intuitive and a lot easier to use. And this isn't the only set of fixed icons. We've also got another set up here. And this first icon will open up this new project sidebar. And let me expand this real quick. So here we can switch between the different views. We've got visualization view and then also go to 2D drawings, which isn't too different from what we currently do by using these buttons down here. But as you can see, these buttons will change position depending on which views we're in. So there's always a second where I'm like, uh, wh where's that view again? Oh, here it is. And also, if any of these menu items are open, we don't have those buttons anymore. So we always had to close this before we can switch views. But in the new user interface, this button will always be on the top left corner, no matter which view we're in, and it doesn't matter which of these menu items are open, so it just becomes muscle memory. And on top of making it pretty much just easier for us to navigate, they've essentially combined these two buttons into one. And in the future, they can add more views into the sidebar without having to add more icons here. So this has a lot of potential, like maybe giving us an assembly view, which would be great for engineers, but probably for woodworkers too. It's gonna change our workflow a little bit, but... I can see it happening. Anyway, they also moved the items manager up here, which used to be down here. So not that big of a difference, but probably needs a little bit of getting used to. They probably just moved it up here because they needed space for the mode island. Um, another thing that they moved up here was the command search button, which used to be nested all the way under the help menu. And all this does is that allows you to access tools by searching for it. But since I usually use my iPad with an Apple Pencil to design, I've never used this function. In fact, I didn't even know this existed until now, which was why I kind of found it interesting that they moved this into such an important location. I can see this being helpful for new users or maybe for when the parametric modeling update comes out. Um, I don't know, maybe they got something else planned, like being able to search for design elements by name without having to dig through the items manager. Now I'm just speculating and going off on tangent. Sorry guys. Um, anyway, now in between our fixed icons, we still have our adaptive icons. So if I double tap on any of these parts, you can see our adaptive UI is activated, giving us the tools that we need for our next actions. So nothing's really changed there, which is great. Um, but I want to reiterate how nice it is to have the measurement tool anchor down here. So so no matter what's going on up here, this remains unchanged, unlike on the current UI. 
And another thing with the current UI is that if I have any of these menu items open, I have to close it first before I can use the measurements tool again, which is no longer an issue with the new UI. Oh, and speaking of menus, which you probably already noticed, Aside from the sketch menu, the other menu items are now a drop-down menu type. So now I can easily switch to the other menus just by simply tapping on these icons. Whereas on the current version, I have to close it first before I can access the other menus. And because they did this drop-down menu, now there's even more space for them to add more tools later on. This new user interface is definitely more streamlined than what we currently have. And not only does it look really good on the iPad, it looks even better on on a desktop. I remember in one of my previous videos, I complained that the desktop version just looked like an expanded version of the iPad program. Something just looked awkward to me. Maybe it was because of the large gaps between the icons. I, I don't know, but with this new update and the addition of these drop-down menus, this just looks and feels so much more like a traditional desktop CAD program, which is not a bad thing because this still looks super sleek and modern because of these icon designs. And just like I showed you earlier on the iPad, these icons are utilizing the space so much more efficiently than what we currently have. And another thing that I really like about the desktop version is that when I move the mouse away, the labels disappear. And then when I hover the mouse back over the icon, they reappear. So in my personal opinion, this actually looks cleaner than what we currently have. And don't quote me on this, but I think we're gonna get the same feature on the iPad when the final version comes out. And of course, we'll be able to turn it on and off so that for those who have the M2 iPad Pro with the hover feature on the Apple Pencil, they can take advantage of this and gain some more design real estate. Um, but yeah, everything else between these two versions are pretty much the same. So I don't know why, but I do like the look on the desktop version just a little bit more. Maybe it's because it just feels more familiar to me as someone who's used a bunch of other CAD programs over the last 20 years. Um, I don't know. But one thing I'm not sure about is why they didn't make the sketch menu a drop-down menu like the others. So right now, if I'm in here, I still need to click on exit sketching to be able to access the other tools. Um, I understand on the desktop, if I draw something, I can just use keyboard shortcuts to go from sketching to extruding or whatever tools we need without going back to the menu. And on the iPad with the Apple Pencil, we can just rotate out of the view and extrude that way. So it's not that big of a deal. I just think it will look more consistent with what's going on with the other menu items. Um, I guess while we're on the topic of complaints, for the lack of a better word, I noticed over here they removed the grid size display and maybe it's just because I'm running the beta version, but right now the only way for us to see what the size of these grids are is to come up here and click on this button here. And I feel like if we have the grids in the design space right now, it just makes sense for us to always be able to see what the size of these grids are without having to come up here every single time. So I hope they add this back in when the final version is released. And another thing I hope to see in the future is allowing us to customize these stationary icons, specifically the command search button, because like I said earlier, I don't use this at all. And I don't know what their plans are for the future, but just knowing what I know right now, I hope that I can swap it out for something else. But that's just me. Um, maybe other people do use the command search a lot and I'm just the outlier. Um, but anyway, other than those three things I just listed, I am really loving this update right now, which actually feels more than just a UI refresh. Of course, now everything looks great consistently across all the platforms, which is awesome. But they've also made the tools easier to find and access, which helped to remove some of those complexities in the program that that honestly, I didn't even know this prior to this. And now everything just feels much more streamlined than before. And like I said, in the beginning, they did all of this without removing any of the features that already make Shaper 3D such a great CAD program to use. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to leave me one of these and let me know in the comments what you guys think about this new UI refresh. And also let me know what other future updates you're most excited about that's coming from Shaper 3D. And if for some reason you haven't tried Shaper 3D yet, use the link in the descriptions to get a 14 day free trial. And if you end up loving the program like I do, be sure to use my code Bevelish Creations 10 to get 10% off your annual pro subscription. Um, other than that, I will see you guys in the next video.